Hello and welcome back to the vlog. I normally get loads of comments about how tired I look in these videos, but I have an excuse today. I'm in between two night shifts in a and &E. I thought I would bring you along tonight and tell you what's happening in the emergency department, particularly because at the weekend in the UK, lockdowns were restricted so that bars and restaurants could reopen. And I thought I'd talk about, are we seeing more people in A&E because of that? More people who have maybe been enjoying themselves with too much alcohol. I know I certainly did. I went out the weekend. I mean, <laughs> I didn't enjoy myself too much to need to go into A&E, but I did go to the pub and it was a very strange experience. Not too dissimilar from being at work in terms of the social distancing, the changes that have been put in and people, particularly staff working in the hospitality business, wearing PPE. Isn't it funny, like everyone's in masks and and especially with the little like the hand washing the hand um sanitizing areas that they have first beer Cheers. Cheers. so to talk you through we waited outside the venue and then we were called through where they took our name and contact details and checked we didn't have any symptoms of covid19 we then washed our hands and they took us to our table the person that led us to the table had a mask and gloves so then one of us would go up to the bar to order the drinks and when we went to the bar there was kind of social distancing lines which we're <laughs> very used to seeing now and at the bar there were these plastic screens so we could talk to the person behind the bar which i got <laughs> the drink order multiple times wrong because it was difficult to hear exactly what i was saying then you pay via contactless and then you go back to your table and the drinks are brought over by someone in pp again with mask and gloves and the person serving us was super helpful really embracing these changes they said they didn't have much direction from the government but were trying their best to interpret what they did know and trying to protect the customers. On the table as well, there was also a QR code that we could scan with our phone that would also tie into this NHS test and trace system. And that's exactly what we're hearing about as well, because I know shortly after the these pubs opened that three pubs in the UK had to close because someone had coronavirus and all the people would have been contacted that was at that pub. So, you know, I said when we, they first went in, we had to put our phone numbers in. Lots of people when hearing that article, I feel like were quite like, oh, surely you've opened too soon if suddenly people had to be contacted. But that's the whole point of this test and trace strategy. So I think it really celebrates kind of that side of it and that side of it working. Obviously, we're going to have to review how the lockdown goes and we may need to go into lockdown again. But measures like this will help contain these outbreaks. So that pub would have to close and do a deep clean and presumably the staff wouldn't have to go off and self-isolate under the test and trace because they were wearing full PPE at the time. But we've also seen more of a negative side of this test and trace system in a sense that Hillingdon Hospital has had to close its emergency department because so many staff are off. And I know some of them are off with an actual outbreak, so they've been infected, but others I've seen reported that they're off because of the test and trace system has identified they've been with those people and therefore they have to self-isolate as well because we know the disease can be transmitted before you've got symptoms. That's a potential huge problem because people that work in the hospital are more like to socialize with people in a hospital. So if some of them um, meet up together, you know, adhering to all the rules and one of them becomes ill, then potentially could take down lots of people from that department. But for me, it does go back to what we talked about in the Bill Gates video on the channel last time is why don't we have have a cohort of doctors given a time like this and a pandemic that can be moved around. I'm quite happy to um, go and cover shifts in London if they needed me to, if you know, there was a pool of resources that we could be moved into areas when we need to. It is weird that we have this kind of big system of track and trace, but we don't have another big system of kind of resources, including um, workforce that can be moved around as necessary too. In more lighter news, check this guy out. I think he's supposed to be me. Thank you so much to whoever sent this in. It's kind of me in my gear, look. I've got a little uh, white coat, stethoscope, make sure you wash that before you see patients. My mask, scrub hat, look at the hair. They've even got the mad hair right. This is so well made as well. You guys can see that, don't look under there. The way this is kind of knitted, Thank you so much to whoever sent this. And they've given me a letter as well. But please, 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 although I absolutely love this and it's so thoughtful, 
please don't send me stuff to the hospital, you know, they have better things to do than to be my fan mail. I crocheted you this present as a thank you, Katie. Katie, you've left your email as well. I'll be sure to chase that up. Thank you very much. Look at this dude. This is gonna be me tonight on the night shift, ready for action. It's Thursday today, so coming into the weekend, so people perhaps enjoy themselves a little bit, and given the lockdown, will we see people drinking a little bit too much? Well, I'll let you know in the emergency department, because I'm on a night shift tonight. Shift starts at eight o'clock. Sonia's gonna cook me a little bit of food before I go now. Oh, what a superstar Sonia is. And yeah, I'll bring you along with me tonight and we'll learn about it together. So here we are at work, parked up, and this is the part in the vlog where I generally talk about the parking and we've got a new ally. Piers Morgan, the journalist and presenter from Good Morning Britain, has joined the cause in pointing out the ridiculous nature that as NHS employees we have to pay to park at the hospital. Are we going to go back? and charge them for the right to park at a hospital. If we think that is the way this country should treat our NHS heroes, then it's not a country I want to be part of. I don't believe that's what most British people no. want. And once again, the government is completely tone deaf. Mm. And I don't want to have any more videos of these people clapping <clears throat> the NHS and care workers as if somehow, there he is, look, look, this is this week, Boris Johnson. Absolutely, fantastic people, fantastic people. Now, can we get them to charge them for parking again? And the fact that they immediately scrapped the parking during the pandemic, they pretty much admit that that's a stupid thing to do, the wrong thing to do, but because the focus in general life is off the NHS, they can do stuff like that to screw the staff over and to kind of make more money. And as Piers said, we've got these politicians and people clapping the NHS, but as soon as the spotlight is off us, it's all about, you know, back on your heads in the NHS. Piers, if you're watching, thank you so much for putting that uh, sentiment across the terms of uh, getting that out to the wider public. But I'd also point out it's kind of even worse than you say because I pay for a permit at my hospital, but frequently there are not parking spaces. So you have to park on the hospital approach roads, right? Because, you know, I'm not just not going to turn up to work. And in that scenario, we'll often get parking tickets. So not only are we paying for a permit, we're then paying to have a parking ticket. Now, yeah, a lot of the time they are canceled, but you have to go through to this private company to get it canceled and then speak to the hospital. It's not always canceled. It's kind of like this Kafka-esque style system that a lot of the time we'll just get bored of chasing up and having to pay the fine. Okay, that's our bad, but we want to be spend our time at work helping people or living our lives, not chasing blooming parking tickets. Anyway, what a moan. <laughs> I never like to start the day on a moan or start the night on a moan. So anyway, that's the moaning out of the system and we're gonna get into our scrubs, ready to face the day, ready to do a good job for the patients. And I'll give you an update halfway through. See you then. So welcome back to the night shift. It is five minutes past four. You're probably all asleep in bed. And I wanted to talk about what we're we seeing in A&E. Are we seeing a big change given the fact the lockdown has been eased and people have been out socializing a lot more over the last week? And you might think that we're seeing a change in the number of patients here you know, given two things. First of all, given the fact that there are more people coming in with kind of alcohol related injuries or alcohol intoxication. And are we seeing more people with COVID-19 now given the lockdowns eased? So let me deal with the first one. In terms of alcohol intoxication, we're not seeing a huge number of people come in. And weirdly enough, this may surprise you to hear, but I personally saw as many people with alcohol intoxication and alcohol related injuries, so falls and head injuries, that type of thing, during the lockdown, as I have seen now since it's eased. So that's people not adhering to lockdown, and maybe these are generally the people that are more likely to be reckless with alcohol. That being said, I haven't worked a weekend yet, so maybe this weekend things are gonna be a little bit different. It's a bit of a cliche, I think people feel like the A&Es are overrun with drunk people at weekends, and that's certainly what I thought they'd be like before I became a doctor, really, which isn't really the case. Although what I would say is you don't have to see 
huge numbers of people coming in drunk for it to be massively disruptive in the department. So if you see someone that comes in with alcohol intoxication, they've got a simple injury, it can take sort of three times as long to deal with them because they're not coherent or sometimes they're trying to be funny or at worst they can be pretty aggressive. But as I say, not a huge problem tonight. So it moves me on to my second point. So given the fact lockdown's eased, are we seeing more patients with COVID-19? Well, sure our answer is, it's too soon to tell because don't forget the incubation period for COVID-19 is around about five days on average. So we're just kind of hitting that five days from the Saturday today. And not only that, people tend to present to hospital about a week later, around about seven days after first having symptoms. And given the fact once someone's infected, they probably need to infect a few more people to really increase the numbers that we're seeing. We're gonna be another couple weeks before we start seeing what the kind of easing of the lockdown has really had an impact in terms of the number of people infected. So I guess I'll keep you posted on that. What I would say in general though it's kind of business as usual in the emergency department by that I mean things have been really quiet lately in terms of general admissions people have been staying away from hospital but this feels like this could be any time I've worked in the department over the last few years we're definitely back up to numbers um, today was the first time I really felt like nothing had really changed in terms of what people were coming in with felt like very much like a normal day. One area that we always see a lot of in the emergency department is mental health issues and I do feel like we're seeing them more frequently and more severe when we're seeing them and I think that is as a direct result of the lockdown. People suffering from social isolation, maybe financial strains or maybe just general worry about this virus affecting them and people around them. And in the emergency department, we really see the tip of the iceberg in terms of mental health. So people when they've really hit a crisis in terms of psychosis or um, overdoses, other forms of suicide or deliberate self-harm. So I'm sure there are many other people across the UK and across the world struggling with their mental health given this lockdown. I've only got an hour and 45 minutes left of the shift because I took my break so late because as I mentioned, we're as busy as we've ever been really. So I'm going to finish off my bite to eat and crack on with the shift and I'll catch up with you guys at the end. Ooh. So I'm back home after the night shift. The last hour and 45 minutes went fine. The time is 7 a.m. and I can hear everyone outside the window. Everyone's waking up to the world and I'm off to sleep. As you can tell, my eyes I'm pretty tired right now, so I'm gonna get out of these scrubs and have a nice sleep. Thank you so much for all the support on the vlog as always. So I think it's time to go to bed. <laughs> 